that I have been thinking about for many years. And that question is, how can we, as participants in this world, and as women, show up authentically and be leaders in our own lives and in the world? And I don't actually mean the whole great big world, although that would be good. I really mean our day-to-day -day worlds. The answer I've come to comes from my work as a social worker, as somebody who's worked for justice in our world, and as a teacher and somebody who's studied leadership. And that answer is that we can find our sacred center and lead with head, heart, and soul. I think that I'm going to start with soul and the idea of purpose, because I think that often the, our purpose and our meanings in life show up in our childhood, and I know it did for me. I grew up as an only child with a grandmother upstairs and a grandmother downstairs. Now, my grandmother downstairs died when I was about six, and so I didn't have as much time with her. But my grandmother upstairs, who lived in the attic, Nana, was my companion. I was kind of a fearful child, and my parents were always trying to get me to be more brave. And the little girl that I went to school with every day pulled my pigtails, and my father would say, just beat her up. <clears throat> Never happened. I was also afraid of escalators, of all things. Even today, I take a moment before I get on one. And I remember very vividly the time that Nana was with me, and I stood there, and she took my hand, and we got on that escalator together. And we stumbled a little bit, but that was okay. As Nana got older, she got forgetful. And by then, I was a teenager. And so she would walk into my room, and she would say, Jeannie, I can't find my rings. And I would say, it's OK, Nana. This happened frequently. And I knew all her hiding places. I think that one story from my past has helped me see that part of my purpose is patience and empathy and just being present with people. So if we're going to show up with head, heart, and soul, how do we do that? Let me talk about head. Of course, we know that our heads are full of highways and synapses that allow us to make meaning and gain a lot of knowledge. I don't know if you know that uh, neuroscientists have found that the center of women's brains is slightly thicker than it is for men. And they think that that allows us to see the big picture in a small event. They also think it allows us to multitask, like folding laundry and texting at the same time. So how do we see the big picture in a small event? An example that I often think of, and I bet many of you have had this experience, is you're in the presence of a baby, and you hold out your finger, and the baby grabs onto that finger. That's a common human development response of a baby. It doesn't matter what country that born was baby, baby was born in. It doesn't matter what color that baby is or what religion that baby grew up in or will grow up in. That small event of the baby's hand really represents the oneness of human beings in the world and can become part of our leadership skill, seeing the big picture in the small event. 
Now, I think one of the most important things about leading with your head is not just the library you build to help you learn, but it's what you need to unlearn. Think about what you might need to unlearn to be a good leader. And when you don't know what to do as a leader, turn to wonder. Ask questions. Be curious. Questions are always better than answers. Head, heart. We know what our heart is. Our heart certainly represents love. And I believe that love belongs in leadership. It's something that sometimes is hard to do. I know often in leadership roles, I've found myself not having as much love as I wanted in a particular difficult moment. But love is really important. It's an interesting fact that our hearts have an electromagnetic field 60 times greater than our brain waves. So our hearts are really important in how we show up. I like to think as a leader, an important part of using your heart is being what I call in right relationship. That means that every relationship that you're in is sacred. And that in right relationship, you show up with your whole self and with love. It requires letting your ego go, which isn't always easy. But remember, right relationship and heart. And finally, there's soul. Soul is definitely the hardest to understand. After all, we can picture our heads, we know where our hearts are, but where's soul? I started with soul and the idea of purpose. And I think it's important as leaders to think about what's your story of finding a grandmother's rings? Because that'll help you find your purpose. Part of purpose is also finding and giving and bringing meaning to our day-to-day -day lives. And in leadership roles, I have found that if I can bring meaning to the day-to-day -day and to the work, I can show up authentically. Now, I don't mean the vision statement, which is where we often try and put meaning. I mean the meaning of being together and working together. In the past, soul has been relegated to organized religion. But I think that that's really a mistake. I think that soul is about the sacredness of everyday life. And that if we can bring that sacredness to our work, we can show up authentically. Now, people find soul in different ways. For me, I find it in quiet, contemplative moments. But maybe for some of you, you would find soul in very active moments. I walk every morning, and I'm always feeling very blessed. I walk early, and I'm always feeling very blessed when there's pink in the sky. And I just try and take in the pink in the sky, because I feel like somehow that touches me and my soul. Now, of course, as a good professor, my head gets in the way. I start thinking, let's see, there are probably particulates in the air, and that's what's causing the pink. And then my empathy gets in the way because I'm thinking about, well, maybe there are fires in my state, and I'm feeling great empathy for people who've experienced that. But I try and stay out of that. The other challenge, I think, for many of us to stay present in those moments, especially those beautiful moments in nature, 
is not to pull out our cell phones and take a picture and post it. Because I think then we lose the sacredness of that moment. By the way, I don't have that problem because I have an AARP cell phone and I don't even know how to take pictures. <laughs> but it's still hard for me to keep my head quiet and to be with my soul. Because if you can find your soul in leadership, I think you can be a sacred witness to the world. Head, heart, soul. Head, what is it that you need to unlearn? How can you work to see the big picture in the smallest event? Heart, how are you going to let your electromagnetic field show up in the world? How can you cultivate right relationships in your workplace and as a leader? Soul, where is your sacred witness to the world? How can you find meaning in the everyday work? And what's your purpose? So I want to give you a little homework, like a good teacher, to think about. And what I'd like you to think about is over the next three to six months, I want you to cultivate and really put intention into a relationship. Now, I bet that when I've asked you that, the first thing you have thought of is a person because that's what we think of when we think of relationships. But I don't want this to be a person, even though that person may be very important and need that intention from you. I want you to think of a symbol, maybe a song, maybe a hope, maybe an idea, maybe a place. Something that can symbolize for you your sacred center of head, heart, and soul. Now, it wouldn't be fair of me to give you homework without giving that homework to myself. And I thought about that. I thought, well, now what would I pick? And I realized that I would pick pansies. Why pansies? Because as a child, we had pansies under a shade tree in the backyard. And I think when I felt afraid or vulnerable, some, for some reason, I went and I just sat with those pansies, you know, and they have those cute little faces. And I would just sit there. And I realized that my story of pansies has showed up in my journals through all these years, especially in my most vulnerable moments. So you be thinking about your symbol that you can place in your head and your heart and your soul over the next six months that will represent your sacred center. I think if you can do this, you can show up in the world authentically. I think you can bring love and purpose to your work. And I think that together we can continue to make a difference in the lives that we touch. Thank you.